Hello everyone, Dell Channel 21 here today with a quick little video. Say you've been wanting to get into the high refresh rate gaming and went all out by buying a new cutting edge 240Hz display and also a new Nvidia Pascal GPU. However, you're still stuck using an aging 70 year old Sandy Bridge i7 2600K as well. Should you upgrade or could this old CPU still be fast enough to push frame rates over 200 in modern titles. Well, I've tested just that using my AOC AG251FZ 240Hz monitor combined with a Gigabyte GTX 1060 6GB and of course my i7 2600K with 16GB of 1600MHz DDR3. And to give it its best shot, I've overclocked it from 3.8 to 4.6GHz. To minimize any potential GPU bottlenecks, I've cranked down the settings to their absolute minimum and tested both at 1080p and 720p. Starting with DICE's Battlefield 1, I tested a match of 64 player multiplayer on the Amion map, and here a definite CPU bottleneck is present. At 1080p it got 115 FPS average, 76 FPS for the 1% low, and 54 for the 0.1% low. And here you can see that the 720p results are practically identical. While definitely a smooth experience, in fact a great match for a 120Hz monitor, we are well over 100fps short here. Performance is much better in the extremely popular Fortnite. Testing on a 100 player match, it crossed the 200 FPS mark at the 207 average. The 1% low is at 143 and the 0.1% low at 98. Now you'll be able to take about a 60 FPS advantage over say a 144 Hz monitor. However, you're still not taking advantage of the entire 240 Hz refresh rate. Dropping down to 720p, so the average rise a little by 9% to 226. However, there is still no difference in the 1% and 0.1% low scores. On to the best selling GTA 5, where I drove a predetermined route through the city and countryside to get an average. Just like in Battlefield 1, there is a clear CPU bottleneck, with both the 1080p and 720p results being nearly identical to each other, with an average of 145. 100 for the 1% low and 81 for the 0.1% low. Still a perfectly smooth experience and perfect for say a 120 or 144 Hz display, but severely lacking to get the full out of a 240 Hz monitor. Moving on to the game most people will buy a 240 Hz display for, Valve's Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Here I tested a match of TDM on the new Dust 2 map. Here performance is great, at 1080p it crossed the 240 mark at 250 FPS average, with 146 for the 1% low and 112 for the 0.1% low. Going down to 720p saw a small improvement in an average to 265, with both the 1% and 0.1% low improving also a bit to 165 and 123 respectively. Here we're taking full advantage of the 240Hz refresh rate, making for an absolutely buttery smooth experience. And lastly, I wanted to throw an old one into the mix, here with Crisis 3, where I tested the particularly intensive grass level of the first mission. At 1080p it averaged 151 average, with 76 for the 1% low and 52 for the 0.1% low. Dropping to 720p saw a 13% boost to a 172 FPS average, but again the 1% low and 0.1% low remained unchanged. Just like with BF1 and GTA 5, a perfect match for a 120 or 144Hz monitor, but definitely not more. In case you were wondering about PUBG, well besides the fact that I don't own a copy, I can assure you there would be no way this CPU could push such frame rates. As tested by Hardware Unboxed, 
even an i7 8700K with a 1080 Ti could push no more than 143 FPS. So, in conclusion and looking at all the results here, could you use the aging i7 2600K for 240Hz gaming? Well, if you're only planning on playing either Counter-Strike GO or Fortnite, then yeah you could. With CSGO you'll definitely be taking full advantage of 240Hz. And with Fortnite, while not taking full potential, you're still getting a good 60 FPS or so of added smoothness over 144Hz. If you do want to run more intensive games, like Battlefield 1, you will be needing to upgrade however. And the i7, while perfect for a 120 or 144Hz display, it simply doesn't have enough power to push those games to such an FPS level. Though, given the fact this CPU is from 2011, perhaps that didn't come as too much of a surprise. In any case, this was just a quick video. If you liked it, a like would be very much appreciated. If you have a comment, question, suggestion or anything along those lines, feel free to leave a comment or contact me on Twitter. Well, thanks for watching and bye bye.